Our interest is in expressing some of the experience we've had with toxoplasmosis and in particular congenital toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis is a, uh, actually it's Toxoplasma gondii is the, the uh, Toxoplasma gondii is a parasitic protozoa and it actually has infected a lot more people than people realize. Most of the time, if a person is born and is already here, they don't even know that they have it. About 50% of the people worldwide have had toxoplasmosis. Uh, in the U.S., it's more like around 23 to 25%. Some places it can be as high as 95%. It is something where most of the time when they get it, it's subclinical, so they don't even realize. If they do have any symptoms, there might be a little swelling or a little bit of something, so it's sort of like the flu or um, glandular fever symptoms, and they are not even aware the way if the question ever comes up, typically they'll go through and do an antibody check. And then if they've had it or if they need to pursue it further, they can send the blood samples to someplace else where they can do more extensive testing. Okay, our experience with it came about because, and Emily is our daughter, she'll be 40 years old in two weeks and uh, she was born with congenital tox toxoplasmosis. Now, it's interesting, congenital toxoplasmosis comes about when the mother gets toxoplasmosis either just before or during the period of the pregnancy. And where they get it during the pregnancy makes a big difference in the outcome. Sometimes if they get it just before they become pregnant, there might be something, but in the first trimester, the first three months of a pregnancy, typically the chances of a mother passing it on to their child are very low. Uh, I think it's like around 15%. It's not very likely. But as the pregnancy progresses, depending on when they get the toxoplasmosis, at the end, the third trimester, it's more like a 30 to 60% or 70% of passing it on to the child. And then the worst part to have it, which is where apparently our daughter, or my wife got it, was in the second trimester. So it, the probability of getting it or transmitting it to the child increases progressively as they go through the pregnancy. But the impact depends. In the first trimester, uh, from what I've been able to ascertain, and I can't guarantee any of this is completely accurate, sometimes it will result in a miscarriage. Um, and, but from another thing I saw, if it doesn't end up in that kind of a result, actually most of the time it doesn't have any results for the child. They come out just fine. In the third trimester, they usually seem okay when they're first born, but symptoms may come out later on in their lives, in the, up to three decades of life. And what toxoplasmosis does is it puts out a toxin. When people are already born and they're living, the body very efficiently gets rid of those toxins. And so that's why typically there's little or no impact or unless somebody's immune system is compromised, typically it's not a problem at all and no action is needed. The problem comes about with the fetus because the removal of the toxins is greatly diminished. It takes longer to get them out of the system. And... Um, the dangers come that you can have eye damage, you can have brain damage, or central nervous system, as they refer to it. And you can, oft times they're born with, uh, with 
uh, hydrocephaly, which is water on the brain, although in the case of our daughter, it was actually microcephaly, a small head.